Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. I'll start with Paris Rapeseed. There were in the past two key patterns here. Then there looked like there might be three. But we went back to only two now. But another idea or ideas. Not a pattern yet, but a number of ideas is growing. Let's start with the two key patterns. The first and large one is the February 2021 to July 2022 ascending broadening wedge pattern. Currently 771 to well up off the top of my daily chart, far enough that it becomes immaterial. It's highlighted on my daily chart in dark blue. This was not a perfect pattern, but it had been the main market driver higher in the early part of this year. The break lower in July left the following incredible targets on the downside. The primary target X is in the 352 even area, but harder to reach secondary target X1 in the 217 even area. These are obviously, well, they are obviously pretty much way out there targets that you can put into your diary on the back page and just look at maybe once a year. The second smaller pattern was in development until the end of September, and on the surface seemed a more reasonable opportunity. It was created from the break low of the larger pattern in June and July, and is the optimized falling wedge pattern. I have highlighted this falling wedge pattern in bright red. The key moment here was the break upwards at the start of October. This break higher ran into a lot of headwinds in its attempts during the earlier part of October and was eventually capped with a combination pattern of a key reversal down and the three day bearish evening star pattern right at the start of November. Now before I start recapping the possible upside targets for this pattern, which I had previously set out, I'd like to reiterate something I had said here for months about this pattern. There is a key problem with it. It has been created in the wrong place. By that I mean it should have been formed after we'd had a prior ascending pattern, not as in this case, after a great big gapping drop lower. This had previously led me to suspect that perhaps this pattern may morph further along into something else. Anyway, upon reflection, I think I will retire these targets topside as the market has fallen enough that not only can I see this falling wedge pattern as invalid, well, well, now invalid, but that other more recent patterns are taking over the running of this market. And that's for the last time we'd have had, we would have had potential targets upside of a primary target X2 in a 702 and 3 quarter area and a secondary harder reach target, possible now, X3 in the 757 area. It was, as I said, seven weeks ago when the market was at its recent peak, and I quote, My only concern is that hanging around here too long and the market may well give up the nascent bullish incentive and we start seeing disappointed longs liquidating. End of quote. Well, that seems to be what has happened. This leaves us with some new ideas that have turned into, or are turning into patterns. First is the early July to date bearish Andrews Pitchfork. The market is at the moment in between the middle time below, currently at 546, and the upper time above, currently 616. You can see the times highlighted in purple on my daily chart. This one may eventually need finessing or even turning into a shallower bullish shift pitchfork. Sorry, bearish shift pitchfork. Both of which I would be happy to do in a heartbeat. The second and third ideas at this time is to look at the whole action since mid-June as either a possible double bottom, which had some merit, well mainly until last week, or into a bearish halfway hesitation, which also has merit. Yet I have a caveat, something I mentioned two weeks ago, and I quote, however the fault line with this is a big chasm, as it is way too early to speculate or to tell if this will be either of these ideas. However, I'd rather stay now, rather say now than keep silent on this. What we can say right now for sure is that the market has been hesitating here at the September low of 569 and a half, unsure on what it wishes to do. So watch this space. That's the end of that quote. Finally, there is again the elephant in the room to address, or should I say the original big elephant in the room, and now a newer, smaller one as well. You see, we had a monthly key reversal down in November. And whatever you do, make sure you take that into a, your calculations or thoughts. Then there is the smaller elephant, the one known as a possible 
weekly key reversal for this week. With nearly two days of this week left, we are set to make this week a possible weekly key reversal. If on Friday we close either over 571.5 or under 566.5, then we'd be on. Anything in between, I would have the lesser outside week pattern. Right now, we are looking at a weekly key reversal up. Winnipeg Canola. I've previously pointed out that during most of October, the 50% Fibonacci line of the October 2020 to April 2022 move at 863.80 have been acting as a support for what looked like an attempt higher. Then things changed in mid-November that eventually saw a monthly key reversal down in November. And this 50% Fibonacci line at 863.80 is again, with the help of the flatlining short medium moving average, currently at 8660, acting as resistance. I had previously said back in late summer, and I quote, it became evident since the start of the sideways to slightly lower movement we've seen here since June, that there was a shallow bear channel, currently 769.30 to 886.10. And it is this that has been driving the market lower during the summer, end of quote. To emphasize this point, I added, and I quote, so it seems that until that slightly bearish channel breaks or morphs into another pattern, it will continue to show the slightly bearish angle of attack of this market, end of quote. Well, as you can see, that bear channel is still there. It has been breached on both sides, most recently in early November, but it still remains valid and is highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart. Two things, one already happened and one soon to possibly happen impinged and may impinge on this market. Firstly, it's something I gave clear warning about in the past and something I've already mentioned. We had a monthly key reversal down last month. Now this was somewhat offset by the outside week three weeks ago, um, but this longer term pattern is still worth noting. Just remember, it is a longer term pattern. Secondly, rising from bottom left to low right, is the June 2020 to date uptrend, currently at 8.03.60, and highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. The market came close to testing this back in early September, and then again in late November, but each time shirked it. I'm not sure on this one, but I would suggest keeping a close eye on it. Finally, there is just the thought of what may be the whole April to date action. It can be seen as a bottoming action. You see, it can also be seen just as it is. It can be seen just as a bare, shallow bear channel, or you might look at it as part of a very large bearish halfway hesitation. It's all still too early on these thoughts, but I think they need to be present when things start to happen, eventually. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. Over September, mid-October, the market had formed a small but effective reverse head and shoulders pattern, which I'd highlighted on my daily chart. It was the break higher over the neckline, highlighted in dark blue, combined with a break higher over the old neckline of September 2015 to November 2017, head and shoulders top, currently at 38.92, which is actually highlighted in bright red. And finally, the break above the short medium moving average, currently at 39.68, that altogether caused the move up into early November. It gave potential targets on the upside of a primary target in the 42.45 area and a secondary harder to reach target X1 in the 44.40 area. In late October, prices reached the primary target and came close to target X1 as well, but finished with a bearish shooting star pattern, type 1 bearish. I've seen enough to realize that the full secondary target X1 is no longer attainable and I will retire it at the end of this uh, commentary. Since that peak, prices have dropped down to the support combination of the old neckline, short medium moving average, and most recently the medium moving average, currently 39.33. Now more on these moving averages uh, shortly, as I wish to discuss a new pattern. Is the mid-August to early November mildly bearish shift picture, which is highlighted in green, bright green, on my daily chart. The market is currently in between the middle time below, currently 37.10, and the upper time above, 
currently 4346. This now seems to be doing the running as the active pattern the market is following. But before we look at anything else and concentrate on this pattern, there is something else I would like to discuss and ask you to look out for. It is a possible bow tie formation of the short moving average, currently 39.39, the short medium moving average, currently 39.68, and the medium moving average, currently 39.33. This has not happened as yet, but we have been awfully, awfully close this week. Hence, even if we do not construct a bow tie formation, I suspect a hell of a lot of ammunition is being built up right now for whatever will be the next move. So, caution, just in case. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investors International Limited. And here comes the final bit.